Okay, so we're gonna start and talk a little bit about history now, uh, the history of the bureaucracy. Now the bureaucracy didn't just sort of happen overnight. It didn't just blow up overnight. It was a slow process. And for a while, the court really viewed the legislature as the main or primary lawmaker. It mostly saw the legislative branch or Congress as holding all of the power, okay? Now one example, for instance, would be the constitution gave Congress the power to regulate commerce among the states. Now, Congress isn't able to make every single decision every single day about how this interstate commerce is implemented. And so the agencies have to make these decisions. For a long time, the courts interpreted the Constitution to mean that the agencies couldn't of their own accord make the decisions about how the law was implemented without first consulting Congress or without Congress's approval, since it was Congress in the first place who wrote the law. So the court's view was that the legislature may not delegate its power to the president or to any administrative agency. We'll get into that a little more in the next video, but just understand that's sort of the prevailing view. Now, there were a few major historical things that changed that. First of all, war, okay? A lot of times when there's times of crisis, and we should really be aware of that right now, the government expands, especially the executive branch. Um, and the Great Depression, World War II, even 9-11, really greatly expanded the bureaucratic agencies. All of the major wars resulted in sharp increases in executive power. And a lot of times this was because the agency said they needed a certain amount of money and because usually during a war Congress is pretty apt to fund any of the agencies that need something the executive branch is usually going to have a high approval rating during a time of crisis not necessarily right now but generally speaking people look towards the executive during a time of crisis and so Congress is going to want to give whatever they can to the executive agencies because they feel like it's in a time of war and they need to sort of acquiesce to what the executive branch needs or wants so an example was, and this is actually from a textbook, a lot of this I'm getting from a textbook that I really liked. In 1944, the Reindeer Service in Alaska, which is an agency of the Interior Department, asked for more employees because reindeer are a valued asset in military planning. Now this was during World War II, so this agency took advantage of the fact that Congress was likely to give money to them simply because it was during a time of war, and they asked for more money, and it's not like reindeer really have a whole lot to do with war, right? After World War II, it was the first time that the federal government made heavy use of the federal Federal income tax. So tax collections increased from 5 billion to 44 billion from 1940 to 1945. I know people allow that because usually in times of crisis, again, the federal government grows. In 2002, we had the creation of the Department of Homeland Security, which was an increase to federal power as well as executive power, bureaucratic agency. And so in time, People began to look towards the government as the remedy for all of their problems, as the source they would turn to when they needed help. Beyond just you know, I need my property protected, so I need laws to protect my property. People began to see the government as doing more than that. They began to see government as uh, an expect, filling an expected role, an active role in dealing with economic and social problems. So people began slowly to change in their perspective and understanding of government, especially after all of these crises and events, World War II, World War I, the Great Depression. All of these things led to a shift in perspective. So people began to look towards the government as someone that would play an active role in helping with economic and social problems, right? And this shift in perspective changed the job of government because people began demanding more of government, expecting government to do more than the basic protect my private property from other people who'd want to steal it from me. And potentially as a result, you could argue, perhaps the courts uh, did this prior, perhaps the courts responded, but the courts really changed in their understanding and their interpretation of bureaucratic agencies and their delegated power. And at this point, the Supreme Court reversed their earlier decisions that agencies cannot make their own rules. In other words, the courts decided that the agencies, bureaucratic agencies, had the power to make rules about how law is applied without consulting Congress. That's a really big deal, okay? So what I'm gonna do in my next video is sort of detail to you what this shift or this change has resulted in. What does it mean for Congress to delegate to the bureaucratic agencies power? Yeah, that's a big deal. So I know this is a lot to swallow, a lot to take in. If you need to take time, watch this video again, make sure you've digested what the bureaucratic agencies actually 
actually are, number one, how big they are, how vast they are, and then the historical context of them and how they've changed over time. Because in my next video, I'm gonna talk more about what the bureaucratic agencies today do and how much they actually govern us through lawmaking. All right, guys, well, I hope this has been helpful. Please show this to as many people as you can. I think people need to be educated and learn about their government. They're going to make any sort of rational or reasonable decision, at least when it comes to politics. All right, guys, thanks, bye. Thank you.